Hey, it's Mike here, and today, another Joe Rogan interview response, I know, but this time it is in response to music producer Rick Rubin losing 130 pounds by quitting a vegan diet, making veganism look horrible, but we're gonna look into that. Anyway, here he is. And I was vegan for 22 years and got very big. I weighed 320 pounds, 318. Yes, the story is that he became obese on a vegan diet, which there are obese vegans, of course, and I don't think they should be shamed, however, when there are constant attacks on vegans and for example now vegans are too skinny and too fat at the same time it's understandable why there's a lot of tension here but the fact that it's like news when a vegan person that's known becomes obese when 42 percent of the u.s is obese virtually all of that is on a meat-based diet so we're gonna of course listen to his story and look at all of the science on his topic he makes claims about genes which we need to talk about and we need to just Look at the trends of obesity among veganism because, uh, yeah, I'm laughing there for a reason. Anyway, let's just get right to it. Who is Rick Rubin? Well, Rick Rubin, if you don't know, is considered a super producer. He helped get hip hop going with Def Jam Records, founding it, helping artists like the Beastie Boys and Run DMC and all that. And then he was the co-chair of Columbia Records for a while, doing things like rock music, working with Metallica and the Red Hot Chili Peppers and one of my all time favorite bands, The Strokes, which he is working on a new album with as we speak. So yeah, I think he's done a bunch of amazing things in his music career, but the amount of nutrition myths and claims that he makes here, I just really do not support. So we're just gonna have to totally separate those two things out. People are complex human beings. And I also have to mention something really quickly about obesity. I'm not trying to fat shame anybody here. I personally view obesity as a disease that's often driven by things like food environments and trauma, which can fuel addiction and lack of education and on and on and on. However, I'm also a firm believer that those should not be taken as a reason to not try and make any change as sort of like it's all deterministic, nothing can be done. So I will advocate for people to be healthier. Let's continue. All right, now let's let the man speak. Here he is talking about his vegan lifestyle. I basically laid on a couch listening to music my whole life. That was my job and what I did not for my job. It's what I like to do and that's all I did. And then, um, and I was vegan for 22 years and got very big. I weighed 320 pounds, 318 wow. at my max with no exercise. So it's only just not good. So right off the bat, we have to separate things out here. We have the insinuation that a vegan diet caused his obesity, but we have to acknowledge that he's saying he had an extraordinarily sedentary lifestyle. Would there be any diet that he could have eaten that would have kept him at a normal BMI? If he was still on a standard American diet, would he have been 400 plus pounds with higher levels of inflammation and worse artery health? Probably. The, v the vegan thing really took me down a... a a dark path. From that statement, you might be thinking he was going down such a dark path because he was, you know, craving meat so much that he had to do drugs instead and it just ruined his whole life. No, that is as far as this interview goes, just in relation to his weight gain. So does a vegan diet lead to obesity? Are all vegans obese? Obviously not. And there are a lot of things about a vegan diet, just really quickly, that decrease obesity risk. For example, just the higher fiber and water content means a lower calorie content on average, which makes it no surprise that looking at vegan populations, they have a normal BMI, and when compared to other diets, are often the only diet averaging normal BMI, the others are averaging overweight. That's the case with the Adventist population in California. So right off the bat, the data is showing something very different than what he's portraying. And you might be thinking, hey, is that just Californians? Well, we can look over to the Epic Oxford study in UK and see the same trend that vegans have the lowest BMI of any of the diet groups. This particular study looked at weight over time, which is, you know, a little bit better than one snapshot. And they saw that while well, everybody gained a little bit of weight, not only were vegans the lowest BMI of any of those groups, but quote, lowest weight gain was seen among individuals who during follow-up had changed to a diet containing fewer animal food. Let's lightning round a few more studies because it's really important to show where the research stands. We have this review on 20 studies on plant-based diets and weight loss and quote, all studies reported weight reductions, not instant obesity. And from this 2022 meta-analysis, they conclude, quote, we found that adhering to vegan diets for at least 12 weeks may be effective in individuals with overweight or type two diabetes to induce a meaningful decrease in body weight and improve glycemia. 
bonus. And also you can go further with a whole food vegan diet looking down to New Zealand and their Broad study, spelled Broad, a randomized control trial. They gave people a whole food vegan diet and they found that at six and 12 months they had recorded greater weight loss than any other study that they knew about that did not restrict calories or add exercise. So yeah, that was ad libitum or eat as much as you want and they still lost some weight, which is amazing. So the point is that Rick Rubin here is the exception to the rule of vegans generally having a much better BMI status. Sadly, people who watched this video could be turned away from what could be a solution for them just because of one person's story. Anyway, moving on. And what about veganism got you that big? It's a, it's a carb only diet. It's just carbs. So is it the carbs? Was it the carbs that made him fat on his vegan diet? Well, it is true that vegans tend to eat a bit more carbs in terms of total macronutrient intake. But again, they average lower BMI. There's also Asian populations that eat more carbs that average a lower BMI than we do in the US. So I don't think it's the case that Rick Rubin became obese because he was a vegan that ate carbs. Now, I am a vegan that eats carbs and I'm not obese for another anecdote. And it's also about what type of carb. We have refined sugars and we have things like whole grains and whole grains from this study are inversely associated with higher BMI, meaning they're associated with a lower weight. But certainly if you add a thousand calories of soda and refined sugar to a standard American diet, that means more calories in and more weight stored as fat, which as I love to point out, is more likely directly from the fat, just in terms of how the body works from this study, overfeeding people with a ton of sugar. You know, by biochemically tracing where that fat came from, it was 90 to 97% from fat that was eaten, not from sugar that was eaten. Super interesting. And he doesn't give a really detailed account of what he was eating, but here he is. But were you eating vegetables or were you eating pizza? Like what were you- what Vegetables, you pizza, whatever, like whatever they serve in the vegetarian restaurant, they would serve like a, it'd be like a tofu steak with a gluten brown sauce. You know, super, super unhealthy stuff, but I didn't know. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Are all these vegans getting fat off tofu steak and gluten sauce? Well, first of all, tofu is just 15% of calories. So clearly that is not a high carb food. And then a little bit of uh, gluten gravy stuff is not gonna really make vegans reach 320 pounds. There's obviously something more that was going on there. No, whatever he was doing, he had a net excess of calories and wasn't burning enough through that sedentary lifestyle again. Harder to be a vegan then when nobody was a vegan. You know, there weren't vegetarian restaurants all over the place. There was one. There was Real Food Daily. It was the only place you could eat. Real Food Daily, I've been there before, obviously not in the same time period that he was there. But again, you don't go around and just see everybody being obese. I, I don't understand how this is like seriously being pushed right now. He's acting like vegan restaurants are like Golden Corral or something where everybody just rolls up and eats like 5,000 calories and gets obese. No. And then he starts going into his inspiration for his dietary shift, which we'll get to what he actually ate in a second. But he mentioned Stu Middleman who ran a ton of miles and how that made him feel like he needed to change things up. So now I'm big and I'm unhealthy. And I read a book by a guy named Stu Middleman who ran a thousand miles in 11 days. And I remember thinking, how can it be? How can we both be human beings? And I, if I walk to the end of the block, I'm exhausted. I don't have good information. I don't, I, I'm doing something wrong. And two points here, first of all, it's not like this stew guy is slamming down all of this meat all the time. He is on the lower carb side, but he was even featured on No Meat Athlete because what he's generally eating is plant-based, though he does eat fish. We're talking salads, oils, vegetables, soups, lower starch grain seeds, nuts, and then that fish. He's clearly eating a lot of plants still, but the biggest point here is he could have just easily read a book or met someone like Scott Jurek, although he came along later, who is an ultra marathon runner who has held multiple insane records, like having the speed record for the Appalachian Trail, which is 2,200 miles for a time, and then also holding the 24 hour distance record in the US of 165.7 miles. You know, Scott did those things eating vegan anyway. Now we get to his dietary shift. I read the Stu Middleman book and he talks about meeting this performance expert, Phil Maffetone. Okay, Phil Maffetone is the answer. I email Phil Maffetone. I want to become your patient. And we became friends and um, he started treating me. He very much wanted me to eat animal protein, which I wouldn't do because I was a vegan. He got me to eat fish and eggs as a 
to get animal protein, neither of which I liked at any point in my life growing up. So this guy convinced him to quit being vegan, and of course, it was fish and eggs. However, I have to emphasize that nothing magical happened here. He even ended up adding exercise. Here he is. He was with me all the time. He trained me. He got me to do, uh, you know, heart rate based cardio. And I got much healthier working with Phil. And I didn't lose any weight. I might have lost five pounds over two years. So this is where we have to emphasize really hard that the title of this Joe Rogan video is extremely inaccurate because he's saying that he quit being vegan for two years and he did not lose 130 pounds because he stopped being vegan. He only maybe lost five pounds, even with exercise. And if I had to guess what was happening here, he probably just finally reached a calorie equilibrium by adding exercise, but it wasn't enough to lose weight. But stopping gaining weight shows that if he had probably just stayed vegan and did something like this, or just wasn't extraordinarily sedentary, then he may have never gained that weight in the first place. Anyway, he goes on. And he's living with me and he said, I watch everything you eat. I watch how you train 999 people out of a thousand who are doing what you're doing, all their weight would fall off. For some reason, yours is not coming off. Couldn't figure it out. And then I was thinking, well, my mom was obese. It's just a genetic thing. I've always been overweight. It's just what it is. It doesn't seem like he actually got tested for obesity genes or anything like that. He's just making the assumption about himself because it seemed to be hard for him to lose weight. But again, I believe in the laws of thermodynamics and while you can have some resistance when you have obesity genes, you know, it doesn't determine everything. You know, you can't escape thermodynamics. It's calories in, calories out still to an extent. And this is where I have to say, I actually did get my obesity genes tested and I'm about 90th percentile for obesity genes, meaning I'm worse off than about 90% of the population. And I'm a vegan and I eat carbs and for some reason I'm not obese. But of course I have to use a study to back up what I say and directly to his claim from this study. People who had obesity genes still responded just as well to weight loss interventions like exercise as people without those genes. So my guess is that, well, you know, it seemed like he wasn't eating a ton. He probably, again, just was reaching equilibrium and they never truly tracked calories. However, then he started working with somebody who was fully planning his meals. Go out to lunch with Mo. He sends me to his nutritionist. I go to see the guy and he puts me on seven protein shakes a day, like egg, egg white protein, and then fish soup salad for dinner, like super low, low calorie, high protein, no carb diet. So yeah, he had a nutritionist literally plan low calorie, high volume meals, which of course put him into a calorie deficit. I feel like if he just had a vegan nutritionist do something similar, the result would have been the same. And of course I have to mention that you can still have seven vegan protein shakes a day. Of course you can have vegan soup and obviously you can have vegan salads, like come on. Oh, it makes me so frustrated the way that this was framed anyway. Here comes the miracle. And in 14 months, I lost 130 pounds. Whoa. And it was like a miracle. So how do you lose 130 pounds of fat? Ignoring liposuction, obviously you have to burn about 3,500 calories per pound of fat times 130. We're talking about 455,000 calories over the course of 14 months. You know, it wasn't quitting a vegan diet and having 455,000 bites of animal protein that did it. No, it was calories, but let's continue the math here. We can divide that up by the number of months, 14. It's 32,500 calories a month, a bit less than 10 pounds a lost a month. So that's a 1,080 calorie deficit per day that was required. He appears to be about 6'1", and then they had added exercise for him. He probably had a requirement to maintain a weight of about 2,500 calories. So my best guess is that that nutritionist just locked him in at about 1,500 calories a day, and boom, over a little over a year, he lost 130 pounds. It didn't matter that he wasn't vegan anymore. It was the math anyway. He continues on the topic of veganism. I believe veganism was good. It's like I was brainwashed. So did you believe it was good for the planet or did you believe Both. it was good? The healthiest diet in the world. How is that possible that you could look at your own body though and Something's it's not wrong, wrong with, with the diet itself? Yeah, it's not the diet, it's me. This is where I have to partially agree in that I do see a lot of people masking unhealthy, you know, junky eating patterns as like, it's vegan, it has to be healthy. 
Obviously, this can only go so far. We know that things like vodka and Oreos and french fries are vegan and so obviously not healthy. But even though those are considered vegan things, it appears that vegans are eating a healthier dietary pattern. I mean, we have 15% less cancer, like 70% lower risk of all diabetes. And heck, you saw the BMI charts, but I have to mention something. He's talking about eating a low carb pattern here. He continues to push the low carb thing that we'll get into. and. Maybe the most important point here is that multiple meta-analyses show that a low-carb diet is associated with about a 30% increased risk of all-cause mortality. So yes, he lost some weight. That's good for him in that sense. But he's joined a dietary pattern that is associated with an increased level of mortality that if a vegan diet had, it would be something that Joe Rogan mentioned every time he talked about veganism. My life changed and then started doing the ice and sauna was, was another part of it. Sometimes we'll do 30 minutes in the ice before even getting in the sauna. So now he's talking about how this ice and sauna thing was also a part of it. So it's clear that he was just making a ton of different lifestyle changes in and around here, trying to be healthier, doing what he could. And yes, it is the case that ice baths help lose weight as this study found. So yeah, he did a lot of things that are just so above and beyond being vegan or not. But what is he eating now, Joe Rogan asks. And so what is your diet like now? Um, pretty close to carnivore. Yeah, he's pushing it further to the carnivore thing, you know, joining that carnivore ideology maybe played a part in why he's on Joe Rogan's podcast in the first place. I've seen him on other carnivore podcasts. So yeah, that is a horrible diet. It's horrible for the environment. It amplifies your carbon footprint. It has what I would say, no rigorous research backing it. Definitely no long-term research. No, this is a dietary pattern that skyrockets LDL or bad cholesterol and is based largely around carcinogens. But as for that ideology, a big part of it is anti-veganism. People love to bash veganism to feel better about eating that many animals. That is probably why he's so cool with going so hard against veganism. Anyway, I just want to hit a couple anecdotes. The other way, there are endless ones of these, but here we have people who went vegan and lost a bunch of weight. There's one here, this dude who says that, yeah, him and his family, quote, tried numerous diets, including keto, that left us feeling sluggish and terrible. He lost 200 pounds going on a plant-based diet. And then we have Josh, who actually met in Canada. You know, he lost 200 pounds by going vegan and then became an ultra athlete. So by going vegan, he was able to become that person like Stu that Rick had initially been like, I wanna be more like that. Anyway, in the end to sum it up, uh, yeah, he did not lose 130 pounds because he quit being vegan. You know, it was two years of not being on a vegan diet until he started losing weight because he was put on a nutrition plan, had everything locked in. And like I said, he probably burned about half a million calories because of that plan over the course of 14 months, a thousand calories a day. It's also interesting because he makes the point that he finally decided to just put his health in other people's hands, you know, people who knew what they were talking about to finally have something good happen. He could have just as easily done that and stayed on a vegan diet. You know, he read Diet for a New America, which he says made him go vegan he understands that animals suffer and what the effects are on the environment and so forth. So I feel like he could have accomplished the same thing, been better off in terms of cholesterol and arteries and inflammation and so forth, and still not harmed animals. It is also the case that vegans average normal BMI and on and on. And I showed you study after study on how it's a good diet for weight loss reviews and meta-analyses. So yeah, the research is crystal clear. Once again, Joe Rogan, Brogan, Hogan podcast, whatever is not a good place for nutrition information. <laughs> and lastly, yes, Rick Rubin has done amazing things in the music industry. I'm sure he's a great guy. I just think that the message that he's putting out there is misguided and I hope he doesn't learn the hard way of what type of damage can happen by consuming a high animal carnivore style diet. So in that sense, I hope he quits, <laughs> honestly. So my wish for him is that he realizes that it's not obesity and veganism or non-obesity and meat. That is a huge point here anyway. Let me know down below what you think about all of this. I'm sure you guys have interesting stuff to say. And of course, feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff that helps me out. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.